Hi guys, in a previous video I showed my Easy UHF system on my TBS Discovery uh, and I also mentioned that I wired it up using the traditional method using plenty of servo cables and a couple of people that watched that video pointed out that you can now use the UHF system in SBUS mode which means we can use our single cable. So today I'm going to show you all the setup, uh, the physical and software side setup to uh, actually use a UHF system on your quadcopter. So let's get all the physical out of the way. So the first thing you're going to need to do is install your receiver on the top plate of your TBS Discovery or other quadcopter. I've used a single cable here from channel 1 and looped it round into channel 1 on my servo prongs which I've installed on my top plate of the TBS. All this does is carry the signals inside the board itself to here on the plate so you can then have another servo cable come out and go into the NASA. This just makes the whole quadcopter look a bit more neater. If you've already got your TBS set up, you'll know all this anyway. The next thing to do is to mount the Easy UHF transmitter onto your existing transmitter. I'm holding mine on with Velcro. This makes it easy to remove, should I need to. I'm going to use this single cable to go from the Easy UHF transmitter to my existing transmitter. It's important to put your aerial on. Never power up the system without an aerial as it may damage it. Installation is very easy. Just slide the transmitter up and attach to the Velcro. Your Futaba cable will clip straight into the back and that's it, you're set up and ready to go. When you power up your transmitter you will also hear the Easy UHF starting up too. Now this Futaba TAFG Super is able to power the Easy UHF transmitter using that single cable on the back. But I have noticed that my battery life in my Futaba radio does happen to run down quite quick. You can add an extra battery to the UHF system to make it last longer. I use a free cell LiPo and a connector to connect. The UHF transmitter is easy to use. As you can see, you have a low power and high power and a fail safe slash bind button. The next step is to go to immersionrc.com download the tool software. If you already have a previous version of this tool software on your computer, make sure you delete it first as this may cause problems. Now connect your receiver to your PC using the mini USB port. It's the same one used for GoPros. Start up the Immersion RC tool software and go down to your receiver. Click on it and then you need to click read settings from the receiver. Once your computer has read this information, it will display the firmware version. It's important to make sure that your receiver firmware version matches your transmitter firmware version, which I'll show you later. If you need to, you can make any changes, but this setup seems to work very well. Once you're happy with your settings, it's important that you upload the settings to the receiver. If you don't do this, the receiver will still be on the old settings. As soon as this is done, unplug the USB cable and then plug it back in. Now it's time to set up the servo mapping. Click on the tab at the top. Again, like we did on the configuration screen, click read settings from receiver. Then ensure that your settings match the settings that you're seeing here. As you've seen at the start of this video, I plugged my servo cable into channel 1 on the receiver. If you're doing this for the first time, it will say PPM1. You need to change it to PPM MUXED. And again, like before, you need to upload these new settings to your receiver. And when prompted, remove the USB cable from the receiver again. Now let's bind our receiver and transmitter together. Plug it back into the computer, then click on the bind tab at the top of the software screen. This is the button we're going to press when we're ready for binding. With your transmitter off, make sure you have the power output set to low. Now place your finger on the fail safe slash bind button whilst turning on the radio. Hold this until you hear it start beeping. Now you can click on that large red bind button in the software. Your computer will prompt you that the bind process was successful. All you need to do now is remove the USB cable from the receiver and then power off the transmitter.
It might be worth checking the firmware on your transmitter just to make sure that it matches the firmware that's on your receiver. To do this you can use the same USB cable and plug it into the transmitter. In the software click on the Easy UHF TX then read the settings from the transmitter. When the settings are displayed ensure that your transmitter ID, your firmware version and frequency band all match your receiver. Now let's install this on the quadcopter. I'm using the X2 port on the NASA to go straight to the channel 1 port on the receiver. Now start your NASA assistant and plug the USB cable into the LED module. Here you can see that my sticks are responding already. If it's not working for you, then go up to basic, click on RC and make sure you have PPM selected. Now calibrate your sticks. Click start and then move your sticks to their endpoints. Then click finish. Now put all your sticks on your transmitter into their center positions and then check the sliders and make sure that they are in the center positions also. If they're not exactly in their center positions you can use the trim tabs to put them into center. Once you've done this then do the stick calibration again. Now let's assign our switches some channels. On the radio go down to function then scroll your way down to channel 6, 7 and 8. I've assigned channel 6 to switch B. At the top this will be off, then course lock and home lock. Channel 7 is set to switch C. Switch C is my GPS, attitude and failsafe. I'm going to assign channel 8 to the, my left slider. Later on I'm going to use this left slider to make my gimbal look up and down. So to do this I clicked on it and then went to LS, meaning left slider. With this I should be able to look up and down using my gimbal without having to take my hands off of the sticks. It's important to set the endpoints for the channels that you've just set. Once you've done that switch, then set up your intelligent orientation control. Click on advanced and then IOC. This is where I assign this switch. The top will be off, then course lock and home lock. If your switch is not selecting these, again adjust the endpoints. Setting up the failsafe is very easy. Change this tab down to failsafe. Now when you move your switch you will go from GPS to attitude then to failsafe. To set the UHF failsafe, move the switch down so it is in failsafe and put your throttle to 50%. Whilst in this mode hold down the failsafe slash bind button on the top for 2 seconds. Your failsafe is now set. Once you turn off your radio you will notice that the slider then goes into failsafe and your throttle is set at 50%. When you turn it back on you will get whatever mode you were last in. It's important to put your throttle at 50% when you are regaining control after initiating a failsafe. This will stop your quad from falling out of the sky. This is what I'll demonstrate here. I'm now in failsafe and I'll turn on the radio. As you can see my throttle is down. You will notice when I regain control that the throttle is then dropped on the assistant. That's why it's always important to set your throttle at 50% before you take control. These are the settings that have worked best for me. 
I may follow up this video with more advanced settings later in the future, but for now, this is all you need to get flying. I just want to say a big thank you to my friend Rudy at Rude Boys FPV for helping me out, even if he does sound like Groundkeeper Willie.